What's good y'all, it's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, we just finished our 12 hour live stream for Friday Night Smackdown leading into the Elimination Chamber. We literally streamed for over 12 hours. Shout out to everyone that was a part of the stream from the very beginning all the way to the end of Elimination Chamber. You guys were amazing. We had a great time on YouTube and on Twitch, man. And hey, y'all keep sending me the clips and stuff like that. I'm gonna definitely repost them. We had a great time, man. This was probably the best live stream we've done on YouTube and on Twitch. This was so damn fun. Yes, my voice is gone because we was turning up all night to keep the energy going for this year's Elimination Chamber. So yes, pardon me, my voice is gone, but it's okay, it will come back. <laughs> hopefully sometime soon but i wanted to get this video out i'm still going off of you know <laughs> the very little sleep i've had i have not gone to sleep i took a nap before the live stream so i wanted to get this video done get it out to you guys and then i'll go and get some rest that's how dedicated i am to y'all so make sure y'all run up the likes on this because we're going to talk about some of the most notice noticeable things that happened on this show First and foremost, shout out to everyone uh, in Perth, Australia. You guys were amazing. The crowd was very, very lit, and you guys brought the energy. So appreciate y'all for being an amazing crowd. Um, I did take notes, but I'm not gonna go into everything, you know, you know, detail by detail for the notes that I did take. Just talk about the major stuff that happened. So they started off the show. <clears throat> with the the elimin uh the women's elimination chamber match started off the show between becky versus raquel versus Liv morgan versus tiffany stratton versus naomi versus bianca and i will say in my opinion the mvp of this match was tiffany stratton there was two ladies in this match that were super over tiffany stratton crowd was waiting for her to get into the match and becky lynch they were the overwhelming favorites. And this match was actually pretty solid. It had some slow moments. But when Tiffany got out there, the pace started picking up. The crowd was into everything she did, even though she's a heel. And maybe that's a good sign to come um, to see what they do with her going forward. But I do feel like they're going to put some, uh, <clears throat> damn, my voice is fucked up. <laughs> they're, they're probably going to put some more stock into Tiffany Stratton. They're definitely, I can see her being a future women's champion relatively soon. But love what they're doing with her. Um, I want to say, uh, I think Tiffany was the first person to get a pinfall in the match. Tiffany ended up pinning Naomi. Naomi, I believe that was at, at, at the top of the pod. And I think she may have landed on live or whatnot i think it may have been a sunset flip i'm not sure one of the pods correct me if i'm wrong but uh tiffany ended up pinning naomi the first person uh, and got her out of there but overall this match was okay it was it was it was a solid match um i love actually what they did with Liv morgan Liv morgan actually had a good showing she didn't get packed up she felt like she belonged in the match. I, I will give her that. They they really put into the idea that Liv Morgan potentially could win. She lasted pretty much to the end, and she had some good offensive moves, and she looked like she belonged. She did. So I can appreciate what they did for Liv Morgan, and she came off more like a heel this match because Liv Morgan eliminated Tiffany Stratton to a chorus of moves. She even was mocking her, oh, boo-hoo. Like, so, I don't know. Maybe they're teasing something there. Um, I like the little face-off they had with uh, Raquel and, and Liv when they finally locked face-to-face. -face. And I like they were really going at each other. I definitely did. Now, the only problem I had with this particular match was the simple fact of the ending. The ending was, was I guess you could say, it felt rushed in, in my opinion so Liv ended up pinning Bianca right Liv ended up pinning Bianca and then right after that pin for the one two three Becky hits her with her finishing move on Liv and then pins Liv 
for the back-to-back one, two, three, and wins the match. Now, I don't think anyone had a problem with Becky winning, but it's the timing of it. I don't know if they ran out of time because this seems so quick. The match was over. I thought they were going to either do something where either Liv and Becky were going to have a little bit of a one-on-one for like maybe a couple minutes to build up some tension, but no. Liv pinned Bianca, which I was surprised with, and then Liv got pinned by uh, Becky, and Becky wins. I was very surprised. That was the only really concerning thing. Don't know if they ran out of time, but the ending was just so quick. I was like, damn, we didn't get no type of build, no type of story, no struggle. It was just in and out. All right, y'all got to go. And uh, Becky ended up winning number one contender uh, for, um, obviously, for those who didn't watch the show, Rhea. <laughs> um, she's going to end up facing Rhea at WrestleMania 40. I think a lot of us figured Rhea was going to beat Nia. So. And um, that was an interesting way to end the match. It was an okay starter, I think. Once all the ladies was in there, once again, Tiffany Stratton was the MVP of that match, in my opinion. She showed out. Crowd was really loving her. Just the ending felt a little bit rushed. Next, we're going to get into Pete Dunne and Tyler Bate versus Damian Priest and Finn Balor for the Undisputed Tag Team Championships, Unified Tag Team Championships. And um, I expected, obviously, this outcome, but they put on a really good match. Um, honestly, it's out of the, this match in the men's Elimination Chamber that may be matching tonight. This was a really good match. They gave them plenty of time. This was really good. They're doing the announcers doing the announcements for you know the teams and stuff, and then Dominic takes the microphone from the announcer, and he just gets nuclear heat. Still getting the most booze out of everybody. Like you couldn't even hear what he was saying. They probably may have been <clears throat> turning down his microphone, but. He was getting booze and chants throughout the match. People, they were calling Dom a, a wanker, Dom's a wanker or whatever. Like, they were disrespecting Dom. And anytime Dom get disrespected, it was great. There was, it was just a brutal match. At one point, um, Damian Priest threw, I think, uh, Pete Dunn over the top rope. And his lower back hit the edge of the ring apron. I thought that was a pretty tough spot. There was some good near falls, good tag team action. Action, they even started off the match pretty fast. I love this. This was a fun match. And ultimately, you knew Judgment Day was going to retain as you expected. And and I don't know at what point did Finn Balor injure his thumb. But at the end of the match, you can see him holding his thumb. His thumb is bleeding. It looked like it may have been dislocated or possibly broken. He couldn't really move it. He was trying to probably put it back in place. But either way, he got injured during the match. But they showed out. This was a fun, fun match. We kind of knew what was going to happen here. The right team won. I don't think Judgment Day uh, is losing those tag titles until most likely The Miz and R-Truth have their match at WrestleMania. I think that's when they lose the titles. And it may be because maybe... Damian Priest, you know, show has a little bit of sympathy for our truth. So I don't know. But this was a very, very good uh tag team match. Next, the Grayson Waller effect. What everyone had been waiting for. They started it off with Austin Theory there. He's getting booed out the building. And then they entered uh, Austin Theory introduced Grayson Waller. And he got a huge pop. Well, I wouldn't say a huge pop, but people were happy to see him there. So then uh, Grayson brought out Seth. He brought out Seth to a huge chorus of the singing or whatnot. And then he brought brought out Cody to a huge chorus of the singing, his song, the pyro and everything. The pageantry. It was great. Beautiful. So they're talking. Uh, Grayson, I believe, asked him, who does he want to face at the Elimination Chamber? And Seth made a, a, a shocking announcement. Seth said, um, Seth is a few days away from being medically cleared to wrestle again, which is pretty good news. If that's the truth, that's awesome. So 
We may definitely be back in time, ready to go for WrestleMania. We still got plenty of time. I don't want them to rush it, but if he if he says a few few more days, hey, do it. Hey, that's awesome. So it does look like he's going to be ready to go for WrestleMania this year. So that's awesome. Really great news. And he said he really doesn't care because I'm going to be good. I'm going to be back in 100%. And whoever wins, I'm going to stomp them out and beat the crap out of them. So it doesn't really matter who wins. So as I expected it. And then as he sat down, he sent the shot at Romy. He said, big pop. Because the crowd was going crazy for Seth. They were showing Seth some love. And then... Cody was brought up into the mix. Um, Grayson wanted to know why, why you took away this great match that we were supposed to have with Roman and The Rock. You heard huge, massive Rocky Sucks chants and whatnot. And Cody was basically running through The Rock stick, like, you know what I'm saying? He's not here right now, but if he was here, he would call me a candy ass and and talk about pie and all this other stuff. And he brought up, you you like to talk about how you're the people's champ. And he said, for you to be the people's champ, you actually have to be around the people. And then he started to get into his bag on why he decided to not let The Rock take his spot no more. What was the conversation they had before when he whispered to him? And what was the conversation after? And then I want to say Austin Theory interrupted him. So we didn't really get to find out what he said to The Rock, what was said, and why he changed his mind. So at least they know that's a part of a story that people want to find out still. They didn't just throw it away because we still don't know. So we'll probably get that answer within these I think got 40 some days left to WrestleMania. We should get some type of answer why. And we may be getting that soon. Because he dropped a pretty big, he dropped a, a pretty big uh a bomb here. He made it very clear. He was like, before anything gets done, because I'm gonna do what I gotta do and handle Roman. But with you, since you put your hands on me, I wanna fight one on one with the great one. Anytime, any place. I want to fight you, Rock, one-on-one. I was like, okay. So Cody is issued the challenge. I want to fight you. But then Seth, as Seth being the 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 trying to be the shield for Cody, he's like, you know this is not going to be a one-on-one match. So whenever you do have this match, I'm going to be in your corner. Because you know this is not going to be a one-on-one thing with the bloodline. And... um. It was a good moment. So, obviously, we know whenever they do plan on setting up this match, we're going to get, um, you know, Cody is going to have some help. He's not going to be by himself. And I'm sure Roman, I mean, The Rock is not going to be by himself as well. Then, all of a sudden, Austin Theory started doing The Rock stick and whatnot. And then that's when he ends up getting beat up by Seth Rollins and uh, Cody Rhodes. And the crazy thing is... Grayson Waller didn't really seem too upset. If anything, he kind of just, he felt some type of way about Austin Theory at that point, kind of taking over his show, I'm guessing. That's the story they may be going with. Because Grayson was like the overwhelming babyface here. The only heel in that ring was Austin Theory. And he didn't help. Grayson didn't get beat up. And I think, obviously, they didn't want to do that because they probably would have got a little bit more booze beating up the, you know, the the country native, you know. So beating up someone from the country that people are happy to see that's traditionally a heel. They probably would have got booed, but they can work this into a storyline because he did not help Austin Theory as he was getting packed up by Seth and Cody. So very interesting. I believe The Rock is supposed to be at the next SmackDown show. So it's going to be very interesting to see what The Rock has to say. I'm sure he's going to accept the challenge, but will there be a stipulation and when will it happen? If you want to do this right around WrestleMania, someone came up with a great idea, pull the Daniel Bryan treatment. But instead of it happening in one night, happen on separate nights. The Rock versus Cody, night one. If The Rock wins, he faces Roman Reigns at WrestleMania uh, for night two. 
But if The Rock loses, then Cody keeps his spot. Basically, Cody would have to put his Royal Rumble win on the line. Some would think that would be stupid, but but it's more about pride at that point. That's the only thing I can think of unless they do something after WrestleMania. So that's going to be very interesting to see what happens. I don't know when you have this Rock versus Cody match. When do you have it before WrestleMania? I doubt it because, you know, there's no other shows before WrestleMania now. So it'd have to be on WrestleMania or after. So we'll see. Y'all let me know down below. When do y'all think this Rock and Cody match is going to happen and how you think it's going to play out? So next we get into the men's elimination chamber match. Honestly, this was probably my favorite match of the show. This match was great. Match consisted of Drew, Randy, KO, Logan Paul, Bobby Lashley, LA Knight. This was stacked. Um, LA Knight and Drew McIntyre started off the match. They had a nice back and forth. Obviously, they've been talking their trash for a while. I, I, I like the fact that Drew is such a prick. He tried to hit LA Knight with the GTS, bro. And I love what they're doing with Drew. Because Drew has been talking nothing but cash money shit about um, CM Punk. CM Punk hasn't said a single word. And I like that. Because that lets me know whenever he does come back, oh, it's on. And I love that. So that's been pretty good, what they've been doing with um, Drew. KO, he definitely was perked up. He had to be we definitely got a coin this perked up KO because he was on different time and even before the match started he was banging his head on the pod that he was in when Logan came out there not gonna lie to you Logan was Kevin Owens bitch this entire fucking match and it was great KO was in a different mode this was in my opinion I want to say KO may have been MVP because he was just, he was on, he was just like a rabid Wolverine. It was fucking fantastic to see this. Logan, I, I want to say, was the last person to actually get uh, out the pods. Everybody was down at this point. At one point, um, Randy Orton, I forgot who he hit. I think he hit like a, the draping DDT on somebody. Forgot who it was. Y'all know who it was. Can't remember right now. And onto the outside of the ring and of uh, on the uh, um outside of the padded area in the elimination chamber. And he was selling his back the entire time. I hope that's when it was, but he was selling his back like that hurt his spine, you know what I'm saying? The entire match. So he wasn't really at a hundred percent, right? Everyone's down at this point. Battered and bruised up. Bobby Lashley had a good showing too. Um Drew. As always, LA Knight, as always, I want to say, as Logan's about to get out the pot, he's excited. And then all of a sudden, he sees Kevin Owens right before he's about to get out the pot, right in front of him. And Logan tries to keep the pot closed, but he couldn't. And Kevin Owens gets in there, closes the pot, and proceeds to beat the living crap out of Logan. I'm talking about banging his head on the pod over and over and over and over and over and over. It was beautiful. Crowd chanting, thank you, KO. Thank you, KO, for what you did. He packed him up. I mean, he legitimately was packing this guy up. Then Bobby had his moment. This was so fucking cold, bro. Bobby throws KO through Logan's pod, and then as KO's on the outside trying to recuperate from the vicious Kevin Owens beating because the beating kept going after he got out the pod. He got speared straight through the pod. Of course, we've seen the spot plenty of times, but <clears throat> it's something about seeing Logan Paul go through it. Chef's kiss. Fantastic. And then Drew... Hits Bobby with the Claymore kick outside the ring. Try to get him back in. And then <laughs> why I think Bobby was trying to deal with LA Knight. He gets hit with another Claymore kick. And then boom, he was out. So now, LA Knight is in a situation 
where he has some momentum. He's about to take control of the match and potentially get Drew out of here. He's hitting people with the, the BFT and everything. And it's taking a long time for Bobby to get out the, the elimination chamber. So you knew somebody was coming in. Guess who ends up coming in? AJ Styles. He comes in with a steel chair and lays out LA Knight with multiple chair shots. And then he hits um, LA Knight, puts him in the, he doesn't hit him with it yet. He puts LA Knight in the style clash and then hits him with the style clash onto the steel steps. And all Drew does is roll over and pins him. I was like, oh. So obviously, they're going to continue their feud going into WrestleMania. They're having that, ba <clears throat> they're back and forth. I'm looking forward to it, bro. Not going to lie to you. I think they're going to have a, a potentially uh, a good feud because ever since LA, um, AJ Styles has came back, he's been, he's had to smoke for LA Knight. And now LA Knight lost his championship opportunity because of AJ Styles. This should be a, a pretty good grudge feud. <clears throat> Looking forward to it. Damn, it's like my voice is getting worse. It's time for me to go to sleep. No amount of water is going to help me. Damn. <laughs> Anywho. So now we have Randy Orton, um, Drew, Logan Paul, last in the match. Oh, no, and Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens. Randy hits an RKO. Orin K KO gets him out the match. Then Logan hits a, a beautiful crossbody on the top of the pod to lay out Drew McIntyre. And then Logan being Logan, because now it's only Randy, Logan, and Drew left in the match at this point. Logan pulls out the brass knucks. Anything goes in the elimination chamber. He's hyping himself up. Randy Orton hits a beautiful RKO out of nowhere. The camera zoomed in on Logan with the brass knucks. Randy comes out of nowhere, hits him with an RKO for the one, two, three. Now, here's when I knew there was going to be some, some fuckery. It's Drew and Randy left. Drew is looking like he's in a better situation. Randy's selling his back. The back and forth. You know what's about to go on. They're about to, you know, have their little intense one-on-one. -on -one. But you see Logan in the back being attended by referees. He hasn't left the ring yet. I was like, oh, no. He's probably going to hit somebody, most likely Randy, with the brass knucks. You can see it. He never left the cage. You could just see his shoe. I was like, oh, he never left. <clears throat> and he has the brass knucks. And they set this up so well. Randy hits the RKO, right? He hits the RKO on Drew out of nowhere because he, he was just waiting, like laying in wait. Drew thought thinks it's over. Hits him with the RKO out of nowhere. So then Logan comes out of nowhere, hits Randy with the brass knucks, knocks him out. Drew's already on the ground. All he does is roll over Randy. For the easy one, two, three pin. And Drew wins. He wins the Elimination Chamber to face Seth Rollins at WrestleMania 40. I'm really looking forward to this Randy versus um, Logan feud. It's going to be good. I think they're going to have a pretty great match. And it's, it's crazy. They just were, he was just on. Logan Paul's uh, podcast not too long ago, Randy Orton. So this is going to be good. It's going to be great television. How they're going to tell that story should be a fun match at WrestleMania. There's one person you don't piss off. It's fucking Randy Orton. And Drew ends up winning, and I like what they've been doing with Drew. Drew's been winning matches lately, important matches, because of someone else's interference. So it's going to be very interesting to see what's going to happen here because. I don't know if Drew can afford a, a loss here because it'll be like his third time losing to Seth. So I don't know what you do. The obvious choice is to put the title on Drew. But the question is, will that happen at WrestleMania? Will there be some type of swerve? Does Damian Priest cash in? We're going to find out. Overall, I really enjoyed this men's elimination chamber match. Stacked with stars. This was fun.
Last match of the night. <clears throat> well, before we get to that, Triple H made an attendance now announcement of 52,590 people in attendance at the show. Once again, shout out to the, <clears throat> the Australian crowd. You guys were truly amazing. You guys showed out um, tonight with the energy. Voice is just getting worse. And the last match of the night, Rhea versus uh, Nia Jax for the Women's Championship. Her uh, Rhea's family was out there too. So, and they had, I think she was in the front row. They had announced that. I was like, oh, Rhea's winning this match. Majority of this match, Nia was destroying Rhea. Like, Rhea couldn't get no offense. It's really, it's very rare you see Rhea get packed up like that. She was getting packed up. <clears throat> majority of this match and always kept looking at um, uh, Rhea's family in the front row. Always. Um, it was one point they went to the outside and Rhea hit a, oh uh, no, Nia hit a Samoan drop to the announce table but it didn't break. The table didn't break. So Nia gets onto one of the announcer's chairs and hits the elbow drop and then the, fi the table Finally broke at that point. It didn't look good for Rhea. It looks like it's over for her. She get ends up getting hit with that like that corner squash that uh Naya does. She still kicks out. And um I think they ended up doing like a second rope suplex. Rhea's able to get a hit a second rope suplex on Naya. And then uh Rhea hits a rip tide for the one, two, three win. As I expected, her family's there front row. No way she was losing in her home country. Crowd was super pro Rhea. It didn't matter what Nia, uh, uh, Nia Jax was going to do. She was not winning this match. I think it was pretty predictable, pretty obvious. But this was a good moment for Rhea because Rhea deserves it. They gave her all the pyro you can ask for. She got to be out there with her family and friends. I'm happy for her. She deserved that moment. I'm okay with her main event in the show. She deserved it. She's been one of the best parts of um of WWE. She's one of the biggest stars. She deserves it. It was an okay match. It was a solid match. Nothing that, you know, I don't think anyone's gonna clamber to remember. But outside of that, it was a solid match. Solid match. Enjoyable. And that was Elimination Chamber, y'all. Ultimately, <clears throat> it was a it was a solid show. I give it a seven and a half out of ten. Um it was some good Good stuff on the show. Nothing was actually really bad. Most all the matches were were solid. You know, this was really just kind of a pit stop. Most of everything that happened was predictable in a sense. I don't think I got any prediction wrong. I don't think most people did because it was it was the only really uncertain thing is what was going to happen on the Grayson Waller show. Outside of that, everything else was predictable. It's not a, being predictable is not bad. This was really just like a a little pit stop before we get to WrestleMania. Made some matches official. That's about it. So comment down below. Let me know what was your favorite match of the show. What was your least favorite match of the show. Also, what are you guys looking forward to um, going into Monday Night Raw? Potentially what storylines may be uh, getting uh, situated going forward, man. Um, but overall, I enjoyed the show. Obviously, you can tell I lost my fucking voice. This 12-hour stream was truly amazing. It is 8, uh, 8, 10 a.m. right now as of me filming this, this video, finishing up. <clears throat> I appreciate y'all for just rocking with us on the In The Clutch page on Twitch and YouTube. And like I said, down below, let me know what was your favorite match of the show, least favorite, and what you rate the show on a scale of 1 to 10. But I appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all on the next one. Peace. Fuck, my voice is gone.